Let's get started with our second presentation. I'd like to introduce Jessica Liang. Jessica is a member of Asthma Australia's Consumer Advisory Council. She's a passionate pharmacist and dentist based in the ACT. And as a person who has lived with asthma since she was a child, she can appreciate some of the unique challenges of achieving and maintaining good asthma control. Her experience in community pharmacy and in public health service has demonstrated the successful outcomes that can be achieved through grassroots engagement and proactive communication. In particular, the challenges to receiving comprehensive and timely health care faced by members from a non-English speaking background. She believes her background and experience can provide unique insights to the Consumer Advisory Council's outputs, which will promote deeper engagement and ultimately better health, health outcomes. Thank you. Jessica. Hello, thank you so much for your time today. Um, so, I've been a member of the Consumer Advisory Council for a couple of years now, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, it's a fantastic, Asthma Australia is a fantastic organisation. I encourage all of you to pop onto their website, have a look at the resources that are available um, during COVID. Absolutely fantastic that I could refer patients who were in isolation to use their resources um, because obviously they were stuck at home and couldn't come into the pharmacy. So um, thanks for the introduction. A uh, little bit about me, yes, I still practice in community pharmacy and yes, I still very, very much love it. Um, in my time, I have travelled out to the bush and I can tell you we are so very lucky here in Canberra to have so much access to healthcare and I think it's incumbent upon us to do better for our patients all the time. Um, if you want to go to the bush, I can give you an introduction. Happily need more healthcare professionals out there as well. Um, so first of all, who is the Consumer Advisory Council? So with the Consumer Advisory Council, we're one part of Asthma Australia's whole strategic um, approach to enabling our patients to become more empowered to taking care of themselves um, and to optimise their asthma control. Um, we basically provide the community lots of resources. There's anything and everything you can think of. And as a part of, one little part of their strategy, the Consumer Advisory Council um, gives constant advice over anything and everything, including the pregnancy toolkit. So I participated in that whilst I was pregnant and I'm very excited to see that this has been the outcome. Um, and I think it's going to be a fantastic tool that we can use in our day to day. So the advisory council is made up of many different members and we have been involved with Asthma Australia oftentimes um, as asthma champions when we first started off. And our goal as asthma champions is to basically be the face of asthma. So I'm sure in our day-to-day -day grind, we see patients with asthma hired like a Ventolin, and then they disappear off into the ether and we don't always get a chance to engage. So what we do as asthma champions is, I'm sure you would have seen people on the news. It's like, where do they find this random person from who has asthma? That's us. and. <laughs> It's actually really, really, it's actually a really fantastic thing to do because I guess the patient sometimes gets lost. Um, the human face of, you know, it's great that we have all these fantastic clinical tools, but if you forget that there's a patient in the middle of it, it's kind of a pointless exercise. So that's what we do. This is us. This was at our last meeting. Um, <laughs> This is a very familiar thing from the last few years. There is a combination of people in a room and people not in a room. Um, so the, my fellow councillors come from all over the country. Um, and on that occasion, I do believe that Dr Sundram was in the United States and zoomed in for our meetings. So we take this quite seriously. We meet 
pretty regularly and we have agendas that we go through and oftentimes it's topical, very uh, contemporary issues that we discuss. Um, we discuss, you know, where does research go? What direction do we need to be looking at? Are there some interesting things that we've, you know, come across and maybe this is something we need to explore? So um, I was pregnant at the time, as you can probably tell, um, and it was a... This is our one once a year meeting where we meet face to face, um, and I think it was the first one in a couple of years. So, I thank my counsellors because they are they are absolutely the most amazing people. We've got medical trainees, we've got um, community members who have been really involved at a grassroots level for a very long time, all across the country, um, and everybody's experience is different. Um, and that's what makes it a very interesting, um, my, my role quite interesting. So the thing that I guess I've learnt having worked with the, uh, with the CAC is that our challenge is quite unique. Um, what sometimes I think we forget is, I guess in Canberra, we have a very highly educated population. And I would probably say that most of my... Um, counsellors, like colleagues, they are very, very highly, they have high health literacy, but that is not true for a lot of patients. Um, certainly when I went out into the bush, I was literally in the back of Burke, in Burke, and the health literacy out there, the standards are very different. We're needing to really dig down to try and engage with patients at an individual level and you you engage differently and you have to constantly revisit this. And I guess my experiences out there, I've brought to the um, Consumer Advisory Council to say, hey, you know what, it's not just people with English not as their first language who face these difficulties, it's access. It's access to people who are patient enough, have enough time and aren't just in the day-to-day -day grind of what we do for a living to actually spend time with them to try and improve their outcomes. Um, so for most of us, we most of our, our counsellors, we've got a range from very mild asthmatics to literally have tried every treatment known to man. And we all experience things very differently. COVID was a really good example. Those of us with mild asthma, we were concerned, but not the way that our colleagues who were, you know, quite unwell from their asthma, they really took it quite seriously. So that sort of blasé attitude, which I'm sure we've all seen, um, it was something that I guess when we brought this to Asthma Australia's attention, they said, yep, that's actually really important. We're going to do something about it. We're going to raise awareness and encourage people thinking about each other. So thunderstorm asthma I think was probably something that maybe, maybe Cynthia probably did cover and I may or may not have been paying attention, I apologise. Um, but that was my first thought of, wow, this is something really different. I don't remember hearing about thunderstorm asthma. Every time there's a thunderstorm now coming into Canberra, my brain goes, ah, are we going to get a rush on ventilator? Are we going to have potentially a person who comes in that we will need to assist with not just his ventilator? Um, our bushfires, lots of people who had never, ever used a Ventolin before, suddenly magically appeared in a pharmacy. Um, I think we had a CAC meeting towards the beginning of the year, just as the bushfires were still rolling through Canberra, and it was quite topical. We had the Air Raider app, and it was something quite important that we said, hey, this is actually something really helpful for us. Is there a way you can engage um, with this app to make it more useful so more people could use it? Um, we know about the medication shortages. That was something we discussed a lot of um, and how do we lend support to members and was this being reflected with the phone calls that Asthma Australia was getting. Um, the pandemic, I don't think we need to talk about that anymore. I think everybody knows. Um, Wood-fired heaters in the ACT, I don't know how many people have them, show of hands, no judgement. Yes. Wood fires, really nice, not great for asthmatics. Um, so I think there's been quite... I, I actually engaged with um, Minister Vassarotti about the wood-fired heaters because I live in the inner ring 
and you can smell exactly which house has it. Uh, you walk past and you go, that guy's lit his fire in the middle of March. He's a bit soft. It's not Anzac Day yet. So, <laughs> you know, we, we sort of, we had this talk and we said, look, this is actually something that's quite topical. You don't see it in Sydney. So my Sydney side of councillors were like, we don't really understand what you're talking about. Everyone down in Hobart? Yep, that's another place. So that's the important thing is that we're, we're one big group to look at issues as a whole rather than just spot fires here and there. So I guess having had a chance to talk with the other councillors and really sort of deep dive into what are the things that are important for them, things that I keep hearing a lot of is they want to engage with you. And these are people with, once again, really high health literacy. They want a few minutes of your time to engage with them so that way they know that they're not just out on a limb trying to manage their asthma as best they can and there's no access. Um, I think refer your patients to Asthma Australia. It's not because I'm involved with them that I say that. It's They've got great resources. They're about the consumer. Everything that they do, it's to make it easier for the end user. Um, and at the end of the day, yes, I know that we should be spending 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long it is, with our patients. It's not realistic. We know that. We try our hardest, but where they might need extra support or maybe somewhere that they can come back to reviewing what you've talked to them about, Asthma Australia is a great resource for that. Um, so please use them, really do. And when I saw the QR code, because we're all very good at those now, um, the QR codes for asthma first aid, like what can be more fantastic? Well, I graduated a while ago. That didn't exist. Um, the most we had were, the, if you practised in New South Wales, you know the little blue cards? I've, I've not seen one since I've moved to Canberra. And I sit there and I go, well... Where, where are the resources for our patients? They're not reading the CMIs inside the Ventolins. They're relying on us. And you know what? They actually want it. They, it for us in Canberra, we are the, probably the most accessible healthcare professional. It's kind, of, it's kind of on us to actually make it work for them. We can be a great referral resource. We can refer to GPs. It's actually okay to do that. We can refer to Asthma Australia. It's okay to do that. So please, please do it. Um, they'll thank you for it. Now, that's what we want to see. We don't want to see people puffing away. They can't breathe. Like, we're in it for the long run. Pharmacists, I think we're such an underutilised resource. I think there's so much more that we can do. I think we should really, really do it. And Honestly, if you guys are sometimes out there and you go, wow, this is something really random, maybe Asthma Australia would love to hear about it. I'm happy for you to contact me. I don't mind. Um, I get weird emails all the time. I will actually read them. I do click on them. Um, I actually really want you to tell me because in some ways when I sit on the CAC, I'm a little bit consumer. I always have my pharmacist hat on. So I guess please tell me so that I can share it with other people. Um, you'd be surprised where, what doors are starting to open now. Pharmacy's changed in the last 10, 15 years since I've been around. What a great opportunity. Like, work collaboratively with, you know, great organisations like this. It's just, it's such a great resource. So my words are please, just please get in touch with Asthma Australia. It is it is going to be the best thing you do. So that's just me. I re no, she didn't pay me. She didn't pay me to say it. Like honestly, every single time I was getting, hi, my friend's stuck in her dorm with COVID and she needs a Ventolin, or the doctor sent through a prescription for W X Y Z. Um, I would love to FaceTime that person, but it's not always possible. I said, look, this is the page you need to go to. It will walk you through it. If you get stuck, I'm here until 11 o'clock, until whenever. There will be someone here at all times. Like, why not use that? So patients don't remember everything you tell them. They'll remember that, oh, you said go to that website. So, yeah, they didn't pay me, I promise. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Do you have any questions?
And you guys can get involved as well. Occasionally these positions do pop up. 